Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Townsend Gard. I'm a law professor, and I just want a quilt. All right, so today's guest is Dora Carey, and she is the owner and the creator of Orange Dot Quilts. And how we got to her is she was, you were at Quilt Market or Quilt Festival in Houston, or both? Yes, I was at both. Yes, me too. It was amazing. Had you been there before? Yes, that was my second quilt uh, market in Houston. I uh-huh. I attended another one in spring in St. Louis, Missouri. But yeah, that was my second fall quilt market and festival. So it was great. Um, I'm in you. <laughs> yeah, it is great. So t- so um so what big what, why let's just talk a little bit about quilt market before we go on. So why is it important for you to go to quilt market? Oh, uh, quilt market, uh, I think it's a must in the industry if you are a quilter or you are part of the quilting industry to be at the market because um, everybody who's somebody in the industry is there and you are seen and you can do business with and everybody on the spot. I just love it. I think it's part of uh, being in business in quilting to be at market, at least one of the markets. There's spring market and fall market. Um, So at least one of them, whoever thinks of being in this industry should try to attend one of the markets. For me, it's very good for exposure. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about that. Uh, you you know just to to be seen and to show that uh, I am serious about this business and being in this business as a pattern designer, uh, showing my new patterns. I usually wait and launch my new patterns at market. Um, that gives market uh, importance to to others too. But uh, it also raises a little bit um, the the hype, you know, um, for me too. And uh, then I have this possibility of reaching so many people at market because I know everybody will be there. So everybody has a chance to see my new patterns and see what I've uh, worked on all this, uh, all this time. So yeah, I I like market for that. And then, you know, getting a chance to talk with so many people, like I uh, met uh, your um, Judy, your colleague. Yes. Yes. And, and many others. Um, It's a great After a while, as I said, this is just my second market, but I think after a while, everybody will get to know everybody. So it's kind of like a big, big returning to your family, family reunion type of thing. Yeah, it's got that feeling. There's a lot of joy and a lot of people connect. It's kind of amazing. So did quilt shops, is like the goal for you to have quilt shops um, carry your patterns or sort of what is your goal at market when you're there? To have my patterns in as many hands as possible, that is practically my goal. Um, the distributors have usually, because I am carried by all the distributors in the United States, so they already have seen my patterns because I usually send them uh, a sample or a photo beforehand. But to have the quilt shop owners stride by, you know, just stroll by and look at my samples and see my patterns, uh, it's a much better way for them to, re- to, to kind of see what the pattern can do. So uh, there's nothing like uh, being able to touch something and see it. And in my booth, I also always uh, give ideas of how to market my patterns and how to kit my patterns, you know, for shop owners. And if they buy from me directly or they go through distributors, that it's not as important to me as long as they see my patterns and they get a chance to, um, you know, to, to see my marketing ideas for my patterns and, and just maybe buy them later from a distributor. That is fine too, as long as they buy them. <laughs> so one of the, yeah, exactly. So one of the questions, the things that I was really curious is how do you um, go about designing your booth for market? Is that a big part of your vision of like, how how much time and effort goes into designing the booth? You know, um, maybe I'm unusual. Um, 
from others. I, I, I do think about designing my booth, but um, not as much as you would think. Um, maybe I should put more time in it. What I do, I know the patterns. Uh, and the quilts that I would like to emphasize at a certain market. And I will design my booth around those quilts. So my color palette, uh, I will just make sure that all the quilts are fitting in that color story. And, mm. uh, you know, I, I have some some furniture in a booth, which is necessary to display the actual paper patterns. But the quilts are arranged that uh, in such a way that they each look the best in the position that they are in a booth. So it takes some time, but I usually do it on the spot. I don't do a lot of pre-planning because I am more, um, I am creative and I work the best that way with the pressure of the last minute, last minute time constraints. Um, but yeah, I, I make sure ahead of time that my quilts kind of um, have the same color story, sort of, you know, they go well with each other. So um, to bring yeah. a uniform, hom- homogenized look. Yeah, and they're they're beautiful. So let's. Um, why don't we? First of all, we always ask sort of, what's your first memory of sewing? Um, on your biography on Etsy, it says that you didn't start quilting until you got until the two thousand two thousand. I can't remember. In two thousand six, I discovered quilts. Um, yeah, because I came. Uh, yeah, I came here from Romania, and we don't have quilting in Romania. Um, and I arrived in the United States in 2001, actually, but I just discovered quilts in 2006. Uh, but I started quilting in 2008 when my daughter destroyed the quilt and I wanted to replace it <laughs> for a, a friend of mine. I know that was, um, I didn't realize really, um, I wasn't hooked into quilting right away when I first discovered quilts in 2006. It seemed too much. I was working. I was too busy. But once I had to make a quilt and I made one, um, my first quilt was a Bargello quilt. And uh, I, I just, I didn't even buy the book. I just got the, I, I realized that I kind of know how this uh, system, the Bargello system works. So I just created a quilt on my own and I made it and I presented it to to uh, this uh, person whose quilt my daughter destroyed. And um, it was such a, such a great feeling to, to just create something out of a raw material, create something that is so treasured. So that got, that got me hooked. So from then mm-hmm. on, I just couldn't stop making quilts. And I turned it into a business just in 2015. Yeah, and what and and what made you decide to do that? So, um, and did you have an art background? Your 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 patterns are really beautiful. They're really striking. And I'm curious, did how did you get from quilting to making your own patterns and selling them? Well, I I, I uh, I'm an engineer actually. By um, I have a degree in engineering, mechanical engineering, hydraulic machines, automatization. Can you imagine? And then I also have a degree in art. It's true. I'm a graphic designer. I went to school for five years um, to become a, a graphic designer. So I have a lot of art background too. Um, what made me become um, turn this into a business is that I just could not. Uh, I could not do my my job, I kept on thinking about quilting all the time and I just wanted to be able to make a living out of quilting. It seemed to me such an ideal place to be where instead of having a job and a hobby, I can make my hobby into a, a, a living <laughs> where it can provide a living for me. So I, I just, I would feel like I never go to work. I just enjoy making quilts and patterns. And ever since the beginning, I have to say, for my first quilt, I did not follow a pattern. That's something in me that wants me to put my own twist on any pattern that I've ever used. So I always wanted to do it my way. Um, And I think that was a natural progression to go from that into creating my own patterns and why not selling them since they seem to, uh, when I, whenever I show my quilts at my local quilt guild, which I joined after I started quilting, um, I got a good reaction. So everybody was ooing and eyeing about them. Um, and they started asking me, oh, this is new. It's fresh. It's different. Do you have a pattern for it? Um, so that's how I slowly started writing the patterns without even thinking of it as a business. Um, in 2013, I opened that Etsy, little Etsy store, and um, that's how it started, very slowly, small steps. 
Um, and then in two, 2015, I attended the first quilt market helping a friend. Um, and from then on, you know, I, it, it just grew really, really fast. So I, I, I have so many ideas and so many um, patterns still sketched on my notebooks. I have about a dozen notebooks full, full of sketches and new patterns. But it takes a while to get them out there, to get them crystallized enough and, and you know, to a finished stage. Um, but I don't like ideas. And I think that's why it's such a good match for me. Uh, the fact that I do have this possibility, this opportunity to put my ideas into something tangible and something that can provide a living for me and can bring joy to some other, to other people, you know? Yeah. That's, it's really it's cool. Ideal. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm looking at some of your patterns that you sent to me and they're just so beautiful. I think what's also really amazing about them is how beautiful the patterns are. So the oh, photograph and, and sort of the, the design of it and the, mar- the, the branding of the, the orange and, um, you've really thought through this and obviously it's your graphic. I mean, it, it's, you've got the perfect combination. You're obviously very creative, but you've got the graphic design background and the engineering background. Um, and you, um, they're just beautiful. Yes. They're really beautiful. Thank you. I, I have to say the engineering background is really helpful as a pattern designer because there's a lot of math going into designing a pattern. Um, Mm -hmm. believe it or not, in quilting in general, uh, there's a lot of math in there unless you do improv quilting, but um, which is great. Uh, It's just as an engineer, I tend to be a little bit more analytical. So everything needs to make sense (laughs) and be a little bit more organized. Um, But um, being an engineer is really, really, really helpful. So so, I'm really... Um, when I look at the, you know, I haven't, I haven't made one of them, so I would love to sort of try it and chat with you after I try your pattern. But what I see from this pattern is you really do seem to walk people through step-by-step everything, which is really nice, you know? I do try. I try to, um, I was a new quilter too. And the advantage of coming to quilting from a culture that doesn't have quilting at all whatsoever is that I wasn't aware of any rules that might be in quilting. So I just, I felt free to approach quilting the way I thought it should be approached or the way I felt comfortable with. And that's why I, um, I guess that's the other probably part of being so successful. I didn't, I didn't stop to think and worry about, oh, is this how should it be done? You know, is this how things should be done in quilting? I just did it. Um, And um, then when I started writing patterns, I realized, well, what if somebody else is just new, completely new to this process? Because it is, it does take a little bit of a learning curve to get comfortable in, in quilting. There are so many terms that sound very strange to a new a quilter to a beginner or an outsider, like fat quarter, what is that, you know, <laughs> or even yeah. binding, what's binding doing, or they're, they're, they seem so easy for us, but for an outsider, my patterns at the beginning were aimed exactly at beginners, and uh, only later uh, I started making a little bit more difficult patterns, but I wanted to give confidence to a new quilter. Uh, anybody could take some of my patterns. Most of them are marked, labeled um, easy. Um, mm-hmm. And I think there's enough information in them to have even a really, really new person in quilting finish a quilt or a quilt top without any problems. You know, just feeling confident and just getting the quilting art really kind of giving a boost to all these quilters to start quilting that was my that was my one of my aims at the beginning to and even now to encourage encourage everybody to take on this beautiful hobby well it's really great I think um if we have listeners because we haven't started posting yet so I always feel like it's like pretend but um it's they really are cool and what I think what's nice about them is they're they seem like doable um, and simple in terms of like, I can do this. Um, but at the same time, they, they produce things that aren't like just regular things like the, 
the um, the split pinwheel is so pretty and interesting, and the motherboard one is so cool. So it it really does allow you to have a little bit more pizzazz than just a really boring beginning project, um, which I think is really interesting. Yeah, thanks. I, I was aiming for that. 